Hey, what's up guys? It's Beja at Baker Hill Farm. Today I have a video for you that is so simple and I'm just gonna be explaining some things to you that if you enjoy baking bread, if you're milling your own grain, if you're doing sourdough, these all might be terms or just some knowledge that you need to know. And that is talking about baker's percentages, hydration, and then we're just gonna make some like really simple bread with 100% whole milled grain. Okay, so first things first, for this recipe, you're just gonna need a sourdough starter, fresh milled hard wheat, and water. That's literally it. Also some salt, and then anything you wanna sprinkle on the top of your loaf. This is gonna be so simple. I'm just going, I'm doing this for the purpose of showing you that one, you can make 100% whole grain sourdough bread. You don't have to put bread flour in it. You don't have to put like store-bought white flour to get sourdough bread. You can just do regular whole grain. That's what they did for thousands of years. So I don't know why we think we gotta change stuff. The other thing is, I wanna talk to you real quick before we get into the recipe about baker's percentages. So I know when I first started making 100% fresh milled bread or like any kind of artisan bread, you would hear like it needs to be 80% hydration or you want to do 20% starter and I'm like, can you just give me a recipe because I don't have time to try to figure this out. So I'm going to tell you the fastest way to figure this out what it all means and then the recipe we're using is going to be using that sort of method um it's just it just tells another person how hydrated your dough is essentially like that's it so if you have a thousand gram loaf which all that means is your bread like the flour you're using you weighed it out and it was a thousand grams so if you have a thousand grams of flour and you do 80% hydration, that's pretty simple to figure out. It's just 800 grams of water is what you use. Look, I wrote it down. <laughs> so we've got a thousand gram loaf, which is a thousand grams of flour at 80% hydration, super thirsty, 800 grams of water. All whole fresh milled wheat, blah, blah, blah. Everything you mill at home, it's thirsty. It needs some water. Okay, and then right down here, I told you that I put this little um, talking about your sourdough starter to make bread rise, to have a good rise on it. You want about 20% of your overall volume of bread to be your starter or, you know, the before you add the water. So um, for a 20% starter, that's 200 grams of starter. That's really simple to understand, right? So we're gonna make a 500 gram loaf today. So basically take all of this in your brain and cut it in half. So we're gonna start out with 500 grams of hard white wheat and we're gonna do an 80% hydration. So that's going to be 400 grams of water because we're doing 80% hydration. And we're just we're just cutting all this in half see 1,000 divided by 2 500 so for our starter we're gonna need about a hundred grams of starter if you have a little more starter it's fine I'm probably gonna do like 130 so let's get into it and measure out our wheat okay so I'm going to mill this in my harvest nutri mill it is very dusty or floury um, I kind of get mine set where I want it to before I actually put the grain in there. So once I turn this on, I'll crank it just a little bit more and I'll start to hear it um, touching. And I just want it touching just a little bit and that's gonna give me a nice fine flour. So go ahead and mill all your grain. Okay, so here is my 500 grams of flour. Now we are going to measure out 400 grams of water. I don't know, my scale is being so weird. I'm just going to give it like another drop just because I don't know if the scale's being weird. 
Okay, and then add this to your flour. Just add all of it and bring this together. So incorporate everything really good. Okay, now I want you to see how this looks right now, okay? See how this looks when I push on it, it breaks apart, um, but it is nice and hydrated. Like you can feel, it's wet. I can feel the water in there. So I just want you to take note of what it looks like, just kind of the texture of it. And we are gonna come back. Now remember, we only have flour and water in here. So cover this up for one hour. Okay, so I've got it covered right here. And I'm actually gonna write the time on here so I know when I did this resting cycle, which is actually called auto lease. I'm sure that has like some kind of, I don't know, that's a fancy word for resting. You're just letting this rest. Remember, there is no salt in here. There is no sourdough starter. It's just flour and water. You're gonna see when we come back after this that this dough has transformed just from resting. And so this is a very important step when you're using 100% whole grain. This is gonna cut back on you kneading and all sorts of things. So just put the time so you don't, I think it's 7.45. So, writing it just like that, auto lease 745, we'll come back in an hour. Okay, so it's been an hour, this is what it looks like. See how much it comes together? Now we're gonna add our starter. Okay, so here's my starter. I fed this last night and I've had it in my sourdough home for overnight. So I'm going to add about 130 grams, which I'm just going to add about half of this jar and then eight grams of salt. <clears throat> I'm just going to set this to the side and I'm going to show you how I'll feed it in just a minute. Now you want to incorporate this really well. You want to get all of that starter throughout that auto lease dough. So just take your time and mix it really well. Okay, now I'm just in here handling this dough because I want you to see what it looks like. You can tell that it's a nice dough, but it's not like really smooth. So I'm just going around here and making sure everything's really nice incorporated. It still pulls from the bowl nicely, nice and clean, but I just want you to see how it's gonna transform as we go through this process. Okay, so I put 858 on the top of my bowl. That's when I added the sourdough. I wrote it on that plastic there. And now I'm going to let this sit for about 45 minutes and then we're gonna do a stretch and fold. I'm gonna show you how to do that, super simple. This is just a really simple way to have sourdough bread without kneading and kneading and kneading. You can just kind of let it build strength on its own as time passes. Um, and all the meanwhile, that fermentation process is starting to happen. So um, I'll see you back here in about 45 minutes. But first, I'm gonna actually feed this. I do mine 100% hydration, so what that means is if I add 50 grams of flour, I'm going to add 50 grams of water, so I'm just going to add whatever flour I have because I stuck some in my freezer yesterday, and yeah, I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so 88 grams of flour. Okay. I'm just gonna mix this together. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes. So now I'm going to do my first stretch and fold and oops, this little piece of green did get milled. So you can see already that, that the dough is smoother. 
So all you're gonna do for stretch and fold is you're just gonna grab the dough, fold it over. Grab it, fold it over, and you're gonna do that all the way around. And I'm being gentle with the dough. And once I go all the way around, I'm going to write the time on the top, cover it up, and then wait another 45 minutes and do the same thing. Okay, it's 10.35. I'm doing another stretch and fold. The dough is getting a little bit smoother and more plump, I guess, is the word I'm gonna use. So I'll write 1035 on the top of my plastic as soon as I'm done. And then I'll wait another 45 minutes and do another one. Okay, so I'm doing my third stretch and fold. I showed you two, I'm not gonna show you the next two. I'm doing a total of four, um, but I will show you how the dough is looking. You can see it's less like shaggy looking um, than the beginning. So I'm gonna do two more of these stretch and fold and then I will let it rest for a bit before transferring it into a um, baking pan. Okay, so here's my dough now. You can see it in there. I just did the last stretch and fold. I did a total of four. It's 12.30 now, so at, you know, just in the next few minutes, I'm going to put it put my dough in this pan. So I'm just using a regular bread loaf pan because this is what most people have. This is like a nine by five bread loaf pan and I will let it rest here for about an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and a half to let it do its second rise. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer this over to, I'm gonna get my hands wet. It's easier to work with this if your hands are wet. Okay, and I'm just going to transfer it over. I'm not being like super gentle. And I'm just kind of folding it, nothing fancy. Putting it in here. And now, I don't have like a proper lid to cover this with. So I'm just gonna use this. And I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, it's been, I don't know. Ooh, it looks good. You can tell that it has risen. I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell. And I'm just gonna top it with some everything but the bagel seasoning, cause that's really good on here. We're gonna have this for with some sandwiches. And you want to have this covered up to bake it. So since I don't have like a lid for this, I'm just going to use this just like that. And then I'm also just gonna put this pan of water in my oven um, and this is gonna create some steam. So set your oven to 400 degrees. Got it in there with my water, closing it up. It's at 400 degrees. I'm gonna set my timer for like an hour. All right, I just pulled it out. It's been an hour. I'm gonna take this off. You can see how pretty it looks. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? I'm gonna let it cool for about five minutes in here, then I'll remove it and then let it cool for 10 minutes before slicing it. You can also check the temp of your bread. You want it to be pretty hot in there, like 200 degrees is good. And we are over 200 degrees, so it's fully cooked. I am happy about that. Okay, so I'm gonna cut into this now. And I'm using a knife I don't really care for. I gotta cut it this way and then I'll just flip it around and show you. Okay, pretty pretty. Look at that, isn't that nice? 
So one thing to know when you do this method is you are gonna get, I mean, this is just flour and water and you're not gonna get all that crumble and it falling apart like you do um, usually when you first try to make whole grain bread and you're just using regular yeast. So this is a really nice loaf. It's really well cooked. It's not gummy. You can get like that gumminess if it's undercooked. So that's it. That is a sourdough recipe with 100% whole grain that is literally just flour, water, salt, and sourdough. Like so easy. You can make bread super simple. Now that you have that basis down, you know about the baker's measurements or baker's percentages, if you want to add sugar in there, add you some sugar in there. It'll probably make your fermentation go faster because you're feeding it something. So it's got something to eat on other than just the grain. So it may ferment a little faster. That took about five hours to fully ferment after all the stretch and folds. And then we let it rest in the pan for another hour and a half before we baked it. Um, you can add oil in there. You can add some different dough enhancers. Dough enhancers would be like vital wheat gluten ginger, an egg, um, what else? Potato flakes, those are all considered dough enhancers. They can approve like the bounce of your loaf and all of that. But this is just a really simple loaf. We're actually gonna have it with dinner. We are going to have some ham sandwiches. So I hope you guys found that video to be helpful, informative, um, a simple process for how to make sourdough bread with 100% whole grain. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.